right all right carrying on with um our reactions in aqueous solutions so i'd like to welcome the student that has joined us once again formally and um, today we're going to continue with the uh, reactions in aqueous solutions section which is our section in chemical change of course um before we get to the uh, one of the last parts also within um or well, the next part in chemical change, which is stoichiometry. That is the session for um, today. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some time. We're going to focus on finishing off the reactions in aqueous solution. And then the next um, lesson or session or recording will focus on stoichiometry. Um, and I don't recall recover, um, covering that. I was going to say recovering, but I don't recall covering that with uh, with this group. So, okay. <clears throat> I'm going to look at other types of reactions that do occur. Uh, also with um, uh, in solution, should I say. Also with in solution. So, other two types of reactions, okay, is a ion exchange. All right. We're going to have a look at an ion exchange, and we're going to have a look at reduction. Okay, but there's another, or should I say, subcategories. Uh, sorry, not reduction, redox reactions. But there's some other sub um, sub uh, categories of reactions that is not really referred to or sometimes classified, and uh, we're going to just talk a little bit about those quickly. Okay. So of course, you must understand that each type of reaction does, however, come with certain amount of similarities okay just a certain amount of similarities so first is a decomposition reaction okay and first I'm going to denote that actually down in the blackboard okay so we have what is known as a decomposition reaction okay so what a decomposition reaction is, is that this is a, uh, first of all, of course, it's a chemical reaction. Okay, it's not just any type of reaction. Okay, it's a chemical reaction. In which a substance reacts, of course. Substance, let's see if I can get the word or in here and spell it correctly. Ah just missed it substance reacts to form two or more simpler substances to form two or more simpler substances okay so Decomposition, it's all in the name, it's to decompose, okay? Decomposing is actually a natural resource which does occur also within nature, of course, where things decompose, break down, okay, into simpler or smaller, all right, substances, okay? That's all decomposing, right? If you think of an, a type of corrosion or almost an, uh, one who can be classified as a decompose, rather, is... Um, almost similar to what's the word i'm looking for something that breaks down is uh, i think i think i think okay anybody out there correct me if i'm wrong but i'm going to mention it anyway um compost all right compost does also probably decompose into the ground into the soil okay to fertilize all right the, uh, to fertilize the soil so there's my, in my understanding there should be some type of decomposition that does occur there but differently within chemistry if a substance is broken down all right and reacts in a way then um, it will be broken down into simpler um, substances that's a decomposition reaction okay i just want to change the size of my brush and my ink flow second type is a synthesis synthesis uh, reaction can be a bit of a almost like a tongue twister there synthesis this is also a chemical reaction it's a chemical reaction in which two or more chemical sp uh, species 
okay in which two or more ah let me just fix that chemical species combine to form more a more complex product bind to form a more complex product okay that's a synthesis reaction okay when two or more chemical species or compounds etc they come together to form a more complex product okay almost like a forward reaction of some sort and then of course we have the infamous combustion reaction okay i'm sure we're all well away away aware of combustion reactions and what they um, consist of how they take place Okay, so a combustion reaction is a reaction in which all substances in a compound are combined with oxygen. Okay, so reaction in which all substances, I'm going to try and summarize this as best as possible. All substances are combined with, are combined with oxygen within the compound. So if oxygen is not present, then there can be no combustion okay oxygen is very uh, it's very important i was told the story um uh, when i was at uh, you know when i was at school of a guy who was struggling to get a fire going for his bry and he had an oxygen tank so he opened up the oxygen tank and lit it and well there was quite a quite a big expo uh, explosion okay quite a big explosion so oxygen is a very key element in the uh, combustion reaction all right for, to further go along the definition for combustion reactions is that depending on what the reactants are they will produce carbon dioxide water or metal oxide as a product okay so depending on the reactants Okay, depending on the reactants or the, on what the reactants are, they will produce right the following list, which is CO2, which all knows carbon dioxide, right, water, which is H2O, and metal oxides, which I will write out because there's a long list of those, so metal oxides um, all as products right now combustion is commonly called burning okay another point there that i'll add it's commonly called burning and that's because a lot of burning is associated when there is a combustion reaction okay and if it's associated with burning, there's a name given to it, and that name is called exothermic. Whenever there is a release of heat, okay, release of heat energy, okay, when heat is released, it's called exothermic. If we have an example of combustion reaction, let's just scroll down a bit here, uh, just about let me see just about there all right if we have an example over here of a certain reaction exists in combustion reactions okay you can take um use another color as well we got ch4 plus uh, 2 o2 balancing number there and these are all these are all in the gas phase all right gas phase all right they react with each other you get co2 gas plus 2h2o gas 
That's an example of a combustion reaction. Now, ion exchange reactions, okay, found here in the Siabula textbook, which we all should have. It's free. I must mention this again because it is downloadable for free. And it's open source to anybody who would like to use it uh, as a textbook as well as find the examples over there. Ion exchange reactions. Okay, there are reactions basically in which the cations and, I and anions exchange places, or rather they swap partners. Okay, so if we look there, we have AB in aqueous solution plus CD, which is in aqueous solution. Now, these are just letters of the alphabet and they are placeholders for um, elements from the periodic table or co and elemental compounds. All right. If they react with each other, can we see that B swaps with D? So we have AD plus CB. Okay. Now those can be either solids or they can also be gases. Okay. Depending. If a gas is formed. All right. We call that a gas forming reaction. Okay. Let's just get that down here. If we have A capital B in aqueous solution plus C D, which is in aqueous solution, all right? And and we react them together, we'll have products of A D plus C B. Alright? Now if Okay, A, D, and, or, C, B, sorry, we put, and, or, C, B, are gases, right, if they are gases, then we know that this reaction that took place here is gas forming, okay, it's a gas forming reaction, okay. This is a special type of ion exchange. Okay, what will happen here? It's a special type, like I mentioned, it's a special type. So that means that, let me just get a more neutral color. Either, okay, carbonic acid, carbonic acid, or sulfurous acid. Let me see if it's F. No, it's with a pH. Solve. Oh, that's with F. Furous acid is produced or formed. Okay, it's those things are formed initially. Okay, but they are later. It breaks down right later it does break down further into CO2 which is carbon dioxide or sulfur dioxide okay which is SO2 don't know why I decided to write out sulfur dioxide in full if I used CO2 for carbon dioxide but I'll put in brackets SO2 okay so that is an example of a gas forming reaction right let's have a look at a um, see if we can have a look at a, uh, another example let me just see can find one now. okay there we go so if we have a if we have a carbonic acid okay if we have a carbonic acid um, like h2co3 is carbonic acid okay let's take the reaction uh, let's take example let's take this reaction of NaCO Na2CO3 Okay, which is a reaction between sodium carbonate, all right, and we add that to HCl. Okay, let's check the state of, this is in aqueous solution. 
and HCl is also in aqueous solution the reaction that forms uh, we get a carbonic acid so we get H2CO3 in aqueous plus NaCl also in aqueous all right, and we have a two in front of the hydrochloric acid and a two in front of the Na, and then we are all balanced, okay? Uh, so, however, this is not correct, though, okay? This is not correct because um, carbonic acid uh, is unstable, and so carbonic acid would rather want to decompose into water and carbon dioxide. So, the reaction will further decompose, all right? to the new reaction formula which I'm going to state over here and I'm going to use another color so to form another one so Na2CO3 in aqueous plus 2HCl in aqueous okay that gives us H2O we know that's a liquid plus CO2, carbon dioxide gas, plus 2NaCl, and that's still in aqueous. There's my gas. I know now this is a gas-forming reaction. The other type of ion exchange reaction we know from previously, or from previous lessons, that it is a precipitation, all right? Precip uh, precipitation reactions okay precipitation reactions okay that is obviously a reaction where a solid is formed okay it's so like I mentioned okay that ion exchange is a special type of um, reaction that uh, um, we had gas forming okay but the other one was also a precipitation and we also know that from previous lessons that precipitation reactions does result in a certain solid all right, a solid being formed at the bottom. Um, if it's in a test tube, then we know um, it's a certain salt that has formed in a solid and it cannot be dissolved. Now, acid base reactions, okay, which is also what I'm going to share with you as well. Acid base reactions, they are a special class of ion exchange, okay, that's why we look at them separately from the precipitation and the gas forming, okay, they are in a class of their own. Okay, so what we've already gone through, what we've already discussed is about the precipitation reactions. But what is very important is the um, definition of ion exchange. Okay, so I'm not going to try and reinvent the wheel. Right here we have a perfectly classified, uh, well classified um, definition of ion exchange reaction. That's a type of reaction where positive ions exchange their respective negative ions due to a driving force. Or the definition that I also had down here with me that you can't see but I have it with me um, which I mentioned earlier um, they are reactions in which cations and anions okay which is positive ions and negative ions basically they exchange places or they swap opposite partners they swap partners with the opposite basically okay Acid-base reactions are all about the transfer of protons. Okay, if we have a look here. Obviously, we know from the from the name that these are the reactions that take place between a base and an acid, or an acid and a base. Okay, so what happens when an acid and a base collide with each other or react with each other? What is the outcome? The outcome. Yes, it's an ionic um, reaction. Ions are exchanged. But what products form? This will always happen with the acid-base reaction is that the products will ultimately, in general, always form to be water and a salt. And that salt will be an ionic compound. Let's have a look at this example that's provided for us here in the textbook. Okay, which we have a uh, special case here of sodium hydroxide reacting with hydrochloric acid in aqueous solution to form table salt which is NaCl which is sodium chloride 
and water. So the outcome will always have water in it in general and a certain salt formed. It's up to us just to get the salt correct, right, when we react these two together. And it all makes sense, all right? If we look over here, we can see we have NaOH, which is just about three quarters of the water compound. Only, th only thing that's missing is the other hydrogen. Other hydrogen says goodbye to the chlorine, latches onto the um, OH to form H2O, water's a liquid. And then the sodium and the chlorine, well, they don't have any partners now, so they end up together and they are all happy. Okay, now why is this a special um, example of ion exchange? Okay, it's special because the sodium is sodium hydroxide. It does swap places in with the hydrogen, in the hydrogen chloride. So it swaps places with the hydrogen, okay, to form NaCl, right? And at the same time, that as that is happening, okay, water is also forming, okay? That's happening at the same time, okay? To understand the ions a little bit better, or further understand acid-base reactions, okay? Is that no, not just can um, acids also react with bases, but acids can also react with metals, all right? So what happens when we have a acid, okay, that reacts? with a metal okay let's have a little squiz okay so now acid reacts with with a metal okay what products form well hydrogen will form as well as a salt all right so let's have a look see if we take, for example, we have an acid, HCl, hydrochloric acid, in aqueous solution. That now reacts with zinc. Zinc is solid. We will get hydrogen, but also a salt. And the salt that we get from this reaction, remember, they are swapping places. So if hydrogen is going to form, well, then hydrogen and the zinc must swap. So I end up with zinc chloride. That's my solid. And I have hydrogen gas because hydrogen can't exist on its own. It needs to exist with a partner. I need to balance this equation, of course. And the only way I can balance that is if I put a 2 in front of the HCl. I have two hydrogens, two hydrogens. Oh, and that's Cl2, sorry, because zinc makes two bonds. The next question is, what happened what happens when an acid okay reacts with carbonates all right if it reacts with a carbonate what is the outcome the outcome is that if an acid reacts with a carbonate it will form a salt carbon dioxide, CO2, and water. If, for example, we have nitric acid, which is HNO3 in aqueous solution, all right, plus we have Na2CO3 in aqueous solution, okay, nitric acid reacting with sodium carbonate, okay, what's it going to produce? It performs first the salt, a, a carbon dioxide and water. So the salt that it's going to form is sodium nitrate. So NaNO3 in aqueous solution plus CO2, which is a gas, plus water, H2O, which is a liquid. So these two generally stay the same. Right? The only thing we need to figure out is the salt. It's the only thing we need to figure out, okay? And of course, we need to balance the equation. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I gotta let me see. 
Uh, you put a 2 in front of here to balance the hydrogens, 2-2, two, two, and you put a now a 2 in front of sodium carb uh, sodium um, nitrate, sorry, to uh, balance out the NO3s, the nitrates. Okay, that is what a that's all acid base reaction and basically what it's called is basically trying to neutralize so we call it a, a similar type of reaction is a neutralization reaction that's just a similar name okay they occur all right and the reason why neutralization reaction will a will occur especially for a um, acid base reaction okay uh, when an acid ba and a base they do react, they will en end up neutralizing each other. Hence, we get the name neutralization reaction, and it occurs because water, all right, is a stable covalent molecule, all right. It will form, all right, or it forms from hydrogen ions, all right, and hydroxide ions. Right, and an exchange happens between them because when an acid reacts with a base, you'll always get water. So they stabilize or they neutralize each other. Okay, they occur, all right, as an or in an ion exchange reaction to neutralize each other. Okay, that's just a little bit of theory and quite a mouthful, but just a little bit of theory and could be asked in your uh, test or exam. So that's more about what grade 10 is all about we talk about redox reactions this is probably my favorite thing when i got to grade 12 all right when i got to grade 12 redox reactions was my favorite because i finally understood it only in grade 12. i kind of wish i understood it in grade 10 it would have made my life a whole lot easier but i only really understood it in grade 12 okay so what we need to understand here about redox reactions first and foremost Okay, first and foremost is that redox reactions involves the exchange of electrons. Okay, it involves the exchange of electrons rather than ions necessarily. Okay, so electrons are changing now between each of the uh, elements or the compounds in the reaction. Okay, one ion will lose an electron. If you lose an electron, you become more positive. Now you need to think about it in this way. An electron, and we have learned this really, is that an electron is considered to be very negative. It's always negative. The charge on an electron is negative 1,6 times 10 to the negative 19. All right, the charge on a proton is positive. So protons are positive and electrons are negative. So if I consist of 17 electrons and I lose one, I'm now negative 16. Negative 16 is more positive than negative 17 because negative 16 is closer to zero than what negative 17 is, even though it's by one. If I was made consisted of negative one, if I only had a negative electron if I consisted of one electron and I lost that very one I would be neutral I'd be zero and zero is a positive number zero is not negative zero is positive so if I lose negativity think about it if you're a person if a negative person is always around but that person starts to lose negativity what do they become they become positive you become more positive you start reflecting a positive attitude it's exactly the same thing uh, with um, redox reactions one ion loses electron it becomes more positive now if the one ion has lost that one electron the other one is going to gain it he's going to other one is going to accept it and if they accept that electron they become or that ion now becomes more negative you accept negativity you become negative it's a rule of thumb it's also a rule in life but we're here to discuss chemistry. Cool. Now we need to decide, okay? And this is how we do it. We decide 
if a uh, redox reaction has occurred, we to decide whether or not the reaction is either redox or not, we need to take a look at the charge of the atoms or the ions or the molecules. Okay, if one of them has become more positive, okay, then we know okay that one lost an electron, and if one has become more negative, then we know that other one has gained. If we see that, then we know a redox reaction definitely has occurred. All right, and let's take the textbook example here. The textbook example here that they give us is for sodium metal that is now oxidized. If sodium metal is now oxidized, it will form sodium oxide. And also a bit of enrichment there, sometimes sodium uh, peroxide as well. Well, we know peroxide is quite poisonous. It can be quite harmful, okay? Uh, if you peroxide your hair, that sometimes they say if you don't treat it well, it can damage your hair. Okay, I've seen people with peroxide before. Then we have a balanced equation for it. Okay, Na plus O2 gives us Na2O, and they balance it putting a 4 in front of the Na and a 2 in front of the Na2O. Now that equation is now balanced. Okay, let's have a look there. In the above reaction, sodium and oxygen... On, in the reactant side of the equation, they were both neutral. They had no charge on them. All right. However, in the products, sodium, the atom sodium does have a charge of positive 1. And the oxygen has a charge of two, negative 2, or 2 minus, but rather negative 2. This tells us, a couple of things that sodium lost electrons during this process because it's become positive all right and oxygen has clearly gained the electrons because it's become more negative because they were both neutral in other words they were both zero all right or if you want to think of neutrality as uh, being uh, to uh, to zero then okay great cool okay doesn't matter they were neutral right so oxygen now has negative 2 on the product side and, and sodium has a um, ion value of positive 1 so it definitely lost an electron so we're thinking in opposites all the time so we need to train our brain for this because we don't always think that okay so if I lose I technically become more positive all right and if I if I if I if, if I gain, I technically become more negative. Okay, usually it's the opposite side, in, opposite way around in real life. Okay, but not so here. All right, not so here. Let's see what is next. Now we can obviously conclude that basically looking at that, that a redox reaction has uh, occurred. Okay saying that electrons have be definitely be transferred from one uh, ion species to a another okay let's have a look here quickly at another example okay let me just change my layers let's have a look at the full reaction of uh, magnesium and chlorine so if we have magnesium here we have mg all right plus a cl2 okay get another example or the products rather is Cl or MgCl2. Okay, that's the full reaction. Okay, let's have a look at similarly to the precipitation reaction. In precipitation reaction, we had to develop and form an ionic equation. So over here, I got a balanced. The same thing. I have a balanced molecular reaction uh, I can still fit reaction in there I think balanced molecular reaction which is also known as basically the full reaction <clears throat> then I have an ionic equation right uh, mg plus 
Cl2. Remember, there's no ions or values on the ions in the um, reactant side. Okay. Mg2 plus plus Cl minus. Okay, so to balance this reaction, obviously I've got Cl2 and I just have Cl minus here. I need to add a 2 in front of the Cl minus to balance the equation. All right. All right, now that I've done that, okay, I seem satisfied, okay, with my progress so far. No, no, I'm definitely satisfied. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to check what has happened. So I can see that in my ionic equation, my ionic e equation or my ionic reaction rather, whichever way you want to call it, I can see that magnesium went from being neutral to g becoming positive 2 plus. All right. And I also see that chlorine has gone from being neutral to also a be become minus it has a minus or negative ion so i can clearly conclude that the reduction or redox reaction ac actually has occurred it's actually the presence of redox here right i can say that more so if i want to write down all right the half reactions there's something called half reactions. Okay, now what half reactions are? Half reactions is basically the oxidation reaction. Now oxidation, all right, is basically the, the element or the um, compound or molecule, all right, that was oxidized. In other words, it lost a it lost an electron. It loses electron okay oxidation reaction that's number one that's a separate reaction and then we have a reduction reaction okay and reduction we know gains electrons okay so for the oxidation reaction all right you can clearly see <clears throat> I would write it out like this mg tends to mg2 plus plus two electrons okay mg2 plus plus two electrons okay meaning i lost them right i became positive right i lost them all okay source number one and then number two, how did I gain the electrons? Okay, I gained the electrons by doing this. Cl2 plus two electrons shows that I am gaining the electrons. Okay, shows that I'm gaining the electrons. Tends to two Cl minus. Shows that I gained the electrons and that's what I became. Here, I lost the electrons, and this is what happened. That's how you distinguish between the two reactions. And how can we create an acronym, all right, for to re or at least to remember oxidation and reduction? There is a acronym that exists that is called oil rig. Oil rig. Oxidation. Uh, oxidase. See if I can fit it all in here. Oxidation is loss of electrons, and reduction is gain of electrons. All right? That's an acronym I was taught at school. It still exists today. And the easiest way to remember is oil rig, oxidation is loss of electrons, and reduction is gain of electrons. All right, let's take a few examples. Okay, examples that do exist, examples that I probably have used before in my sessions, and I'm just going to use them again. 
So let's take the reaction of, let's take a lead reaction. Let's take number one. Take a lead reaction, uh, solid uh, plus O2 gas. Okay, let's take another example here. Okay. Cool. And let's see how well we can do here. That becomes PbO2. All right. Okay. That's the first example. Okay. I'll give you some moments to just attempt this example. And then I'll go through the solution. All right. Immediately afterwards. I'll go through the solution. All right. So let's, uh, let's have a look. Uh, let's pay attention. Or let's... Um, do this example and basically I want you to identify to me okay if each reaction or if this re okay I'm going to give you about let me see one two three four probably four or five and I want you to tell me if the reaction is either precipitation um, if it's an acid base or it is it a gas forming or is it a redox reaction solution to this one definitely be classified as a redox reaction let's take a look at another one let's take okay let's take in a 2CO3 okay in a 2CO3 without any classification of the phase Okay, you tell me we have Na2O plus CO2, all right? Tell me, is it acid base? Is it gas forming? Is it redox reaction or is it precipitation? A well, solution to the second example after having looking at it. Okay, we can see we've got a decomposition reaction, all right? A type of decomposition reaction, okay? I know from intuition that carbon dioxide exists as a gas. So without even having the phase being written, I can already tell that this definitely must be in gas form. Therefore, I know that the solution, this is definitely a gas forming reaction. All right. So let's have a look at another example. Let's see if we can do three or four. Okay, let's see if we can do th uh, number three. We got <coughs> two mg. There's a solid. All right, reacting with oxygen gas, O2 gas. Okay, similar to up top here. All right. And we get two MgO. All right, we get two MgO. Okay, so I would like you all to also tell me what type of reaction this is. Is it gas forming, precipitation? Is it uh, acid base or is it redox? Okay, let's have a look at this um, solution to this reaction. We have MGS, which is in this MGS, S standing for solid, of course, plus O2 gas, um, giving us MgO. Okay, so if in doubt, of course, just looking at this, uh, in a test of exam, we'll always have a periodic table, and we can see that Mg is in the um, second group of the periodic table of elements that means it makes two bonds and we can also see oxygen is also in the um, negative two group so it makes uh, negative two bonds okay one is positive and the one is negative MGO's, um, mg is positive and o is negative but they both make two but you can see that they are both reduced to just mgo okay they both reduce to M, G, and just O. So this is definitely a redox reactions. 
or reaction rather when i say they are both reduced in other words they are just mgo and not mgo2 or not mg2o it's definitely a redox reaction okay all right because before okay they would have they would have had all right before they would have had um mg plus two and mg um no mg plus two yes on top there or two plus all right the ionic equation and then the ionic equation for oxygen would have been um to the minus two to two minus okay and then they become mgo so obviously one gained and one was uh, one element gained and the other one lost all right that's why they only have mgo and also we have o2 over there and here we just have o so we can clearly see which one was oxidation and which one was reduction we got time for just a few more of course okay let's move to a another one okay this other one is going to be slightly different all right we should get walk as we will clearly see okay involves the presence of ions on the bomb fecl2 all right in aqueous solution plus in h4 2 s is for sulfur there and that is in aqueous solution that's one uh, <coughs> excuse me sorry all that gives us f e s plus 2NH4Cl and that equation is balanced all right you can see I've purposefully omitted a phase here because I want everybody to tell me the solution for what type of reaction would this be classified as would it be acid base would it be um, precipitation would it be gas forming or would it be redox you all tell me looking at the solution for this one okay this is for number four here the fourth one okay this if you look here we got fes and iron over here not being bonded to chlorine the phase of this is definitely a solid so this is definitely a precipitation reaction okay let me explain why as well for this one well for this is a precipitation reaction because if you have two soluble salts reacting okay if you don't know if you cl2 and nh42s are were both salts and if you have two soluble salts that are reacting with each other okay it is a precipitation reaction when one of the products becomes insoluble in water and the elements or the compound or the product that was insoluble in water was FES okay we can clearly see it's bonded to chlorine so NH4Cl could not have been a solid but FES okay iron sulfide okay is insoluble all right we could see that forming because we know iron is also a metal okay and it's bonded with some with another element and it's not formed a salt okay so we know that this reaction is a precipitation reaction all right so what have we covered in this session okay what have we covered we have covered um other reactions that do occur all right in water solutions or in aqueous solutions but definitely more with water we have looked on at ion exchange reactions and we've looked at precipitation reactions which is an example of ion exchange we have also looked at gas forming reactions that's when a gas is formed and that's a special type of ion exchange reactions 
and we've also looked at other reactions that occur which is decomposition reactions um, synthesis reactions as well as combustion reactions and we've also had a look at the f at acid base reactions as well as redox reactions so this ends the chapter on reactions in aqueous solutions and i want to just thank you all for attending and learning this section with me